Okay, we're ready to add some floor reflections. I mentioned in the book that without a doubt floor reflections are probably the most important thing you can add to your drawing to really make it pop and make it visually exciting. So I'm going to show you how we can do that using Photoshop. And let's start with these red bar stools. You need to select the area you want to reflect. I'm going to use my lasso tool and holding down the option key I can click and let go to make straight lines. This area over here is uh, not going to get reflected because it's so close to the edge of the paper. I'm going to go with, I think I'll stop right about there. And of course I can always add more reflection if I want or erase some of the reflection as well. Um, of course what we're looking for here is not necessarily a mathematically accurate reflection. We want something that looks good. That's what it's important. Not that it is right, but that it looks right. And there we go. Make sure I'm on the background layer. I go to edit and copy. And now I start a new layer, which I will call um, Barstool Reflection. And I will go to edit and paste. It looks like nothing happened, but what actually happened was that selection was pasted right on top of itself. So I'm going to back up a little so I can see this. And uh, now I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. So it's going to flip my uh, paste, that pasted selection. There we go. So now I can move it. And a good thing to know is that you can use the arrows on your keyboard to move things as well as um, your cursor. So if you want something to just move up, um, you know, vertically, and you don't want it to move side to side at all, you can just use your arrows. And also it's good for kind of nudging when you want to just nudge a little bit in one direction. Uh, the keyboard the keys shortcut is good for that. So uh, now it's matching here, but obviously this isn't right. So let's go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. And now I can move this down till it looks right. And one way I can check if it's right does this look like it's going back to our vanishing point, which is right here? Uh, looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'm going to hit return. And now I'm going to change the opacity of that layer so that it looks like a reflection. Um, maybe down to 30 usually looks pretty good. And look at that. Now we have a beautiful reflection. I'm going to do one more just to show this to you again. Going back to the background layer, I'm going to use my lasso tool and my alt, um, my lasso and my alt or option key so I can click and let go and I'm just going to grab some of this sofa and I guess some of the people as well. I'm not doing a very careful job of this but you know just like it is, um, the reflections are the opposite of a shadow in that it is strongest, or I guess it's the same as a shadow, where it's strongest when it's right next to the object and then it gets um, dissipates as it's farther away. So let's go to Edit, Copy, and now a new layer. Uh, sofa Reflection, Edit, Paste, and Edit, Transform, Flip, Vertical, and let's just move this down. I'm using I'm using the keys on my keyboard once again so that it just goes vertical and doesn't move side to side. That way I can make sure that it matches up perfectly right there. And now I can use Edit Transform Perspective to move that. Now we have a perfect mirror image. All we have to do now is change this to I'm going to say about 30. And look at that. Let's turn off the vanishing point layer just so that you can get the full effect. I think you'll agree that um, putting in those floor reflections just makes a huge, huge difference. So whenever you have any type of reflective material on your floor, I, I definitely urge you to add reflections.